Hey everyone, welcome to PTSD TV. Today is PTSD Relationships. Today's episode is called How to Create a Team Atmosphere. So this is gonna be an awesome episode. The relationships, the Thursdays are my kind of personal favorites. They're all my favorite, but uh, Thursdays are definitely my favorites. And we'll just kind of do some quick intro stuff before we get started. Um, so this episode of PTSD is sponsored by my Broken to Unbreakable program, which is my PTSD and CPTSD recovery program. Um, so I am a recovery coach and I help people all around the world now um, recover from PTSD and CPTSD with that program. And, and, and we just got some cool news. Sorry to interrupt you. No. Um, we just got some um, of our new books for the program, if you want to show those. Actually, that is right. Yeah. So um, we just, this was just last week or the week before last? Last week. We okay. got new books. Do you have yeah. them there? Weeks for the program. Our books for the program. Yeah. So these are kind of exciting. Um, these are the new books for the program. So this is the Unbreakable Journal. I don't know if y'all can see that. If you're on the podcast, just picture a, a black book, a little black <laughs> journal. Um, so this is awesome. This is a great resource. This, so when you're enrolled in the program and those of you who are students watching, obviously know this, um, you get these books and these are the new books that just came in. This is the unbreakable planner. So this is, um, three months of something that we do every day, which is awesome. So that's a great book. And then this, this is, this is the, the, ba the, the big one. So this is the broken to unbreakable transfiguration workbook. So we try not to make them too like obnoxiously like PTSD. So we just kind of made them um, a simple design. So for those of you on the podcast, just picture a white book with black text. Um, and this, this is all the worksheets for the program. So there's a, our big thing, right? My big thing is action, 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 right? So these are all worksheets for the program. This is an awesome book. It's a great resource. Gosh, I, honestly, like the workbooks are one of the biggest things, right? Because the action is the biggest thing, ultimately. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so those are awesome. So we just got those in last week. Yeah, and those are sent to um, every <clears throat> every single person who enrolls in to Broken to Unbreakable. Yeah, and they're awesome. I love them. I think they're so cool. I love get I love getting like physical stuff. So that's that's I mean that's another big differentiator. Um, in the program, it's like you get access to Kayleen, you get access to the program, and you get these books shipped to you anywhere in the world. Right. And Which the big awesome. deal is like the learning styles. Right. So some people are, you know, visual and some people are auditory and some people are kinesthetic. Right. Um, and so for the people who are kinesthetic, right, those worksheets, those workbooks are really, really important mm -hmm. for the people who are visual. Um, I do everything like with PowerPoint and there's a lot of um, like, I don't know what you would call them, like um animations i guess like animations right so i kind of walk through um all the things and i make it as animated as possible because me personally i'm visual and kinesthetic and then for the auditory people also the um you know I, everything is is recorded so i separate the audio for those of you you know who just want to like listen to it yeah um, go for a walk cool. and listen to yeah it go for a walk and listen to awesome. a couple modules and it is it's a great program and i'm really excited about that yeah and, those, those those came out super nice yeah those are awesome um I'm thankful for those. So yeah. <laughs> just, I guess, um, for those of you who don't know us, sorry to kind of go off there for a sec, but for those of you who don't know us, my name's Keelene. I had CPTSD for over 15 years and now I no longer do. And like I said, I, I, I'm always pointing to this map up here. If you're watching on YouTube, um, I help people all around the world recover. And this lovely man to my right is Brad Shipke. I am her significant other and have, was there for every step of the way through her PTSD recovery and also had PTSD myself and we both recovered fully recovered and we're um we're here to help you break that belief that's impossible because it's completely possible for you to make that full recovery yeah absolutely possible and that's a big reason kind of we do the ptsd tv shows especially this episode right we know how mm -hmm. um in in our life how our relationship uh, we, we essentially lost our relationship, um, <laughs> a few and, times, a few times, and it was really painful and it was really hard and it didn't always have to be right. And so now looking back, you know, what we want to do is we want to spread that hope and that love and support and kind of give you the resources that we didn't have and that we wish we had, and that would have saved us, um, a bunch of pain, not all of it, but a bunch of it. <laughs> Most of it. <laughs> Honestly. Um, so that's why this, I think is kind of one of my favorite, um, segments yeah, or whatever yeah. right the thursdays we do ptsd and relationships and that's because that was such a huge piece for me you know like thinking i lost you and kind of losing you mm. throughout that that process and that pain was so incredibly painful yeah yeah and that's what's what's unique about like this segment right here is because you get both sides of the story you mm -hmm. get both perspectives you get 
Kayleen, who was going through her recovery, and then, you know, me as the partner, you know, kind of witnessing in, and then both of our journeys kind of in parallel, you get to see both of it. And it's, it's really, really cool because it's hard from like most people, you only get like the one side. Um, but obviously with people in relationships, it takes two to be in a relationship mm-hmm. and like you get to see both sides and, um, both perspectives, which is really cool. And then I think the other thing we should say is like, you know, even if it's not a romantic relationship, you know, mm-hmm. friendships, um, relationships with either parents or siblings or grandparents or, um, kids. Right. So like, uh, or just friends, right. Just like all, like all yeah. relationships, all that um, gets affected. Right. Yeah. 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 And Absolutely. can, can really get torn up by it. Mm-hmm. So that's for sure. That's for sure. <laughs> right. Okay. So today we're talking about how to create a team atmosphere. So we're going to talk about why it's important to create a team atmosphere, um, consistently re- reinforcing that you're a team and, um, having the same vision for life. So number one, why it's important to have and to create a team atmosphere. So why do you think that it's important to have and create a team atmosphere? Well, for me, like it's, it's like, it's important for just like any relationship in general for like, even if like someone who didn't have PTSD, but it's almost, it's even mm-hmm. more important. Um, if you're going through this big struggle while having PTSD, because you want to be on the same page, you want to be on the same side. You want to constantly reinforce that you want to be like rooting each other on versus like being at each other's throats, mm-hmm. you know? And, um, most people don't know how to do this. Most people are constantly fighting whether or not you have PTSD and PTSD makes it so much harder, which makes it again, so much more important to learn how to create that team atmosphere and that like camaraderie together and like having the same goal. I like to think of it as like, um, like a sports team, right? Like everybody or like a Mm -hmm. soccer team or something, basketball team, whatever you want to think of it. Like you have to work as a team to, um, to achieve your goal, to win the game, to, you know, achieve whatever you want to achieve. And, if you're constantly fighting with your team, like there's going to be disagreements. There's always disagreements Mm -hmm. on a team. Right. But like you're going to have to work together and learn how to, um, work together to achieve the goal. And that's super important. Yeah. Yeah. And it's not always going to be easy. There's going to be challenges that you're gonna have to face together, but you have to face it together to get there. And if you're like, if you have like two different, like, um, it's important because like, if, if like, you're not like, communicating with each other if you're not like if you don't know that like you're on the same side you're going to be fighting and like I don't you're just going to be going in different directions all the time right right? so like you're going to be putting your effort into this way and expecting this person to be on your team um but they might be expect or they might be going in the exact opposite direction and expecting you to go with them and like if you don't communicate like what you guys want and like where you want to go out of life and what you're doing to get there like you're just going to be pulling in different directions and your all your efforts are going to be dissipated and you're going to be at each other's throats. Right. And that th- those are great points. Right. And that it, you see that in relationships, PTSD or not. Mm-hmm. Right. We see just in, in general. Right. And all the time. I don't all know if this time. is a United States statistic or a world statistic, but 50% of marriages fail, mm-hmm. right? So 50% end in divorce, one out of two, that's pretty high. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then, you know, of, you know, we always ask the question of those 50% that don't end up getting divorced. Um, you know, how many of those are really happy right. marriages? And in all, in our reference, well, I don't think that we know any actually. Um, maybe I think one, maybe one, but <laughs> the, I think the happiest marriage that we know thus far is a, is a remarriage is a second marriage. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's true. Right. That's true. <clears throat> so we, we, the, there's nothing wrong with getting divorced if you're not with the right person. Right. I'm not by any regards putting that down, but, um, you know, we just, we, that's something we like to talk about, you know, of the people who stay together of, of these relationships that, you know, are, are, from the outside strong, you know, how strong really are they? Mm -hmm. And that is something that we found important is, is creating that team atmosphere, you know, and number one, right. You hear about relationships, you hear about anything with relationships, communication, right? Right. right, So you you know, you need to (laughs) communicate, which kind of leads into our second point here, which is constantly reinforce that you're a team. And this is something Brad did really, really well. Um, when, when we were struggling and continues to do well. Right. But Mm -hmm. like, um, you know, like when we would have a fight or an argument or whatever, put some holes in the walls, throw some dishes, right? You know, eventually it'd be like, like, hold on, like, hold on, hold on. Like we're on the same team, right? We don't need to be fighting. We're on the same team. 
we have the same end in mind, right? Mm-hmm. This is what we both want. We're together for these reasons, right? Essentially right, right. is what it was. We're together for these reasons. You know, I love you. I'm here for you. Mm-hmm. We have the same goal, right? We're not going in completely opposite directions. And that's important to realize, right? Mm-hmm. Like come together and be like, okay, how can we move forward together rather than like fighting each other and like moving in completely sideways, opposite direction. Right, right. This was really important. This is super important if you have, I mean, <laughs> since you have PTSD, it's mm-hmm. like you have, you're fighting this big obstacle in your own life. And like, if you're with a partner or with your, if you're living with somebody else or whatever it is, whatever situation you're in, like you're going on that journey, whether or not you want it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like together you're going on that journey. Like your recovery journey is going to affect your partner. And like, you're going to be, you're bringing them along on your journey and it's going to be a hell of a lot harder if mm-hmm. they're not on your same side. Right. And like, man, just like how, how was like, cause like we weren't, we weren't always like that. We weren't always no. on the same side, even when we were constantly reinforcing it, you know, like, Oh, like we're on the same team, but then, you know, maybe next week we'd get into a fight, yeah. a screaming match or something. Right. And like, we weren't always like that, but it was that consistency of, of always like trying to rebuild that team atmosphere and rebuild that goal and rebuild our, like our mission together and our motivation to get to that mission. Right. Um, like one big thing for us was like Kayleen telling me that, everything that she was doing everything in her power to um heal her ptsd right, right? That was huge. and that was huge right because yeah. like it, it requires work on both sides right right and that's kind of what the team is too it's not like one person does all the work and the other person like doesn't do anything it's like you're both pulling your weight on the team to achieve the same goal so like i did what i needed to do to help her and support her through her own goal but she was also there um doing everything that she could to support herself through her own goal and then and, and again, this, it didn't start out like this. And then right, I right. was doing everything that I could to make sure I was, um, okay. And that I was healing and mm-hmm. that I was like, I wasn't getting like hurt. hurt from all the things that I was going through and experiencing with her. So I was doing everything I could and she was there for, for me to support me. So it's like, it's a, it's a given, it was a give and take on both sides. And like, you know, people say hundred percent, hundred percent, but it's like, you got to take care of yourself and your partner and they got to take care of themselves and us and yeah. then their partner, which yeah. is and super important. That's what it is, right? That team is like, I'm doing everything I can for me, right? Which is going to benefit the team, right? Mm-hmm. And you're doing everything you can for you, which is going to benefit the team. Right, and that's right. ultimately like what you're coming together and doing, right? And also, am I, you know, I'm doing everything I can to support and love you as well mm-hmm. and vice versa. And again, a huge piece of that is communication. And then I think just like one thing that I, I want to say, right. Is like when Brad says like, I was doing everything I can, that meant that I was doing everything that I could. Right. So that doesn't mean like I'm going to therapy once a week and like maybe a couple days after that doing some breathing exercise. Right. That means that I am consistently putting in the effort every day to work on this, to heal, to, to focus on this thing, because I know that this big like monster, right? This big thing affects so many other areas of my life and our life as a team and his life as an individual. Right. So I think that's a really important thing. You know, when you say, you know, I told you I was doing everything I can, that that's because I meant that I was doing everything that I I could. Right. 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 At the the time or everything I had at least knowledge on. Right. And kind of searching for knowledge and Mm -hmm. looking for ways to 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 work it out, looking for references of people who've done it, which there's a kind of a shortage of on the Internet. Um, But, you know, you can find them. Right. Right, Like Louis Zamperini. He's someone famous who's done it. Um, So, you know, doing literally everything you can. Right. Spending all your time and all your energy on it. Really. Ultimately, was Mm -hmm. I still drinking too much yes was Mm -hmm. i still watching netflix too often yes but point being it wasn't just like oh i go for an hour once a week or an hour even twice a week and then i put my hands up and say i'm doing everything i can right right that's awesome and like the communication we can't really stress that enough how important that is Mm -hmm. because like all of our troubles all of our stress came from a lack of communication and a lack of understanding from what the other person was going through so like being on the same team you have to constantly 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 communicate especially when you don't feel like it especially right. when it's hard especially when you have that feeling in your gut where you're like I really don't want to share this or like I really don't want to talk about this or I really don't want to give in and admit that I did something wrong you know and that's the most important 
time for you to communicate with your partner and to build that team atmosphere. Cause like in the team atmosphere, you need trust, mm -hmm. you need transparency. Right. So like whenever like I did something wrong or like I wanted to understand more about like what Kayleen was going through. Cause like I didn't like, I can't feel what she's feeling. Mm -hmm. Right. I don't know what it feels like, what thoughts are going through her head. So I like, I need to ask her, right. Like, like, how are you feeling? Like, like what, what are you thinking about? And like, how, like, how would you, how did you sleep last night? And like, right. and like, um, like what are some ways that we can get better? And then you also look for ways together to get to, to, to improve your situation, to, to, um, achieve that goal of recovery together and communicating that constantly just like keeps the, keeps the team together, you know? And like, and that's, that's like one of the biggest, I think one of the biggest faults in most, most relationships, but like in PTSD relationships, is like the people just can't communicate and then they come to, you know, talk to like me or Kayleen. Then, then they try to be like, Oh, my partner doesn't understand like th that. I'm feeling this, 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 and this, and this, and like all those problems is just a lack of communication because right. like, and communication too is not screaming. It's not arguing. It's right. not yep. getting mad at somebody else. It's not blaming somebody else. That's not what communication is. And that's right. not what builds a team. Conflict does not build a team. Yeah. Right. A loving, supportive, honest, it has to be honest, yep. but also loving, um, an open, transparent environment where you can feel like you're, you can be safe to communicate what you want. And like, that's something that you can build too, because like, we didn't feel that way in the beginning either. No, like we didn't like, she didn't feel like comfortable telling me everything, obviously right from the beginning. Right. But like little by little you build that trust, but it's something that you like, you constantly work towards. You constantly like are asking questions and it's not like, like, what are you doing? What are you doing getting better, girl? Come on now. Come on. Tell me what Come you're on. Tell me that. Why aren't you tell doing me. this? Why, Why aren't, aren't you doing, doing this? this? Yeah. Right. Come on. So it's, it is really important to like sit and have like, and uh, again, everything we say, you know, some of it's tough love and some like, but it all, it all is love. Um, and Brad always says, we want to give you a hug and kick you in the butt at the same time. And that is ultimately it. Right. So we're not beating ourselves up if our relationships are mostly screaming matches because we, we had a relationship of right. screaming matches, you know, Absolutely. at some point. And, uh, you know, I think that's important. An important thing to say, like communication is, is, is honest. It's calm. It's transparent. Right. So it's sitting down and saying, you know, Hey, listen, like are you in a good place to talk? Like, I, I want to yeah. talk to you about something. And then either being like, like flying off the handle and like, okay, obviously it's not a good time to talk. Right. Um, you know, can we talk later? Can we talk tomorrow? Yeah. And pausing that and, and leaving that for another time or like, yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah. I, I am in a good place to talk and just saying like, Hey, you know, I, I've seen you, I've seen you, I saw you, um, I don't know, maybe like commenting on other girls posts on Facebook, you know, like, I have this kind of concern that, you know, maybe something is going on and then they can be like, oh my gosh, no, those are my cousins from Virginia. Like, no, my gosh, no, like that's not what's going on at all. And then you can be like, oh, okay, great. Like, okay. <laughs> so like just something really little like that could cause, that could be a big barrier. That could be a big void in a relationship. Just because of lack of communication and just because like, you're not seeking like the fastest way to seek the truth or to find the truth in a situation just is just asking straight up asking. Right. So many times we just want to like, we want to either talk to other people. Oh, like, what are they doing? Like, what is he thinking? What is she thinking? Right. Right. Um, you just need to ask. Mm -hmm. The truth is right there. Like right. I just need to ask her. I just That's need it. to ask. It's so simple. But she also, Kayleen also brings up another very, very important point where like, if you're starting to have a conversation, it starts to get heated. Oh yeah no to be like oh hold on let's just take a little break and then like let's come back to it let's relax until like we're at a better spot and then you remind yourselves right there right like when someone starts to escalate remind yourself right there like hold on hold on we're on the same team right yeah. let's yeah, take yeah, it yeah. back down we're on the same yeah. team we have the same goals i want the best for you you want the best for me like i want you to be the happiest you can be like i'm not here to to fight you to tell you that you're doing something wrong i'm here to love you support you mm -hmm. and to help you be the best you can be and also help me mm -hmm. be the best I can be. So like, I'm not trying to point fingers or hurt you or anything. Just, but if that, I mean like you just need to know you when you need to right take back. that step back. Yeah. But you can, yeah, you can bring it right back too yeah. by, by reinforcing that you're on the same team yeah. and that you care about the other person, you know, and that you're not attacking them. And this is something that's super important, even still, right. That we work on and that we, we use, right. Because we're human beings, right. Yep. If I have just like an off day and mm -hmm. I'm just like kind of cranky, right. Like yeah. 
I don't know why I'm cranky. I'm just cranky. <laughs> I didn't have coffee early enough. I wasn't hot enough. It, it was <laughs> it was too light. Whatever it was, right? She was marinating. I was marinating. I slept She's in not getting by in, accident, getting right? So like, I'm not getting up. I'm not getting out. Um, you know, like we're human beings. And it's something we still work on, right? Is like, like, hey, like, <laughs> you know, you seem a little off. You kind of seem a little edgy. Like, is is there anything going on? You know, like, are, are you all right? Like, what, what, like, what's up? Right, basically, is what, like, Brad will ask. I'll be like, ah, oh, and then I'll just kind of, like, it's just like a, a breath of relief to be like, oh, yeah, like, I slept in and I didn't have coffee right away and mm. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm cranky, right? <laughs> and then you can just kind of, like, laugh it off and be like, okay, great. And then I don't, I don't take it personally. Right. Which is important. Which is really important. And then I'm like, wow, she's always angry in the morning. Like, and I'm right. like not mulling in my head. I used to do that. Yeah. Honestly, I know. Honestly, I'm like, why, like, why is she always cranky in why the morning? Why is she mad at me? Like, why is she right? mad at me? Yeah. And I'm not even always cranky in the morning, but those mornings where like, I'm a human being. <laughs> right. Um, but those are the thoughts I go through my head. Yeah. And you can take it personally. And the, the way that it could go is you could be, you could just start being angry back. And then, then I'm like, oh my gosh, why is he angry at me? Like, why aren't you happy? I made you coffee. Instead. Right. Instead of just breakfast. like, just like, are you all right? Be like, I just have a really bad <laughs> headache today. And like. I don't know, like, I was too cold last night, my blanket fell off, and, like, instead of me just, like, <laughs> hopping on the complaint train for a minute, and then being like, okay, I'm fine. <laughs> um, so something something Get to actively it. work on, right? And to not hold those feelings back. So when he feels something from me, or when I feel something from him, I'm like, hey, like, are you all right? Like, what's, like, what's going on? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Just like, what, what's up? Yeah. And then it just opens the door to be like, you know what, I've had a little bit of an off day. Yeah. Thank yeah. you for asking. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So that's, that's, that's super important. The communication and constantly reinforcing that you're on the same team, that you're on the same time, that same, same side, and that you want the best for the other person. Be like, Hey, I'm here for you. I want to help you. I want to help you get better. So often we think about ourselves and we, we don't really think enough about the other person and how they're feeling because it's hard. It's hard. You're going through all this stuff. It is right? hard. Like yeah. when Kayleen was like going through like her flashbacks and everything that she was going through, like it's hard to think about the other person when you're doing all that stuff, yeah. but you have to take that step back and really like, like look at it from a different perspective from your partner's pers- perspective and how that's affecting them. It's not like you have to like put, put all of like, put all of your energy into the other person, but you need to take that step back enough just to like understand where they're coming from and where they're, what they're feeling and how this could be affecting them too, because it's not just you, you're affecting other people too. And that's, again, not a, a point to point fingers or right. blame yourself about that, but that's just the reality of the situation. Like, like that's just the reality, right? Like, you're going through all these things, and it's affecting people around you. I mean, how can it not? That's the reality. It's not, not anything to, to blame yourself right. about. But we need to look at that to, to fix it and then also take the perspective of the person that you're with. And, and that really is really important. And that, I think, goes, goes right in, hand in hand with, like, don't compare your pain, right? He's going through pain. I'm going through pain. Mm. Uh, you know, pain is pain is pain. Pain hurts. It hurts him. Yeah. It hurts me. What we're going through is is hard, right? And so for even me to be like, yeah, I'm in so much pain, and he sees I'm in so much pain, right? And for me to be like, yeah. wow, Brad, like it must be really hard for you to see me in that much pain, right? And bring some sympathy and love to him, and be like, yeah, you know, like I'm. I'm sorry that, you know, you're going through that. That must be really challenging and not focus on all like, well, that's nothing compared to, to what I'm going through. Yeah, right. Cause like he's you are, have nothing to complain about already saying like that must be so hard for you to go through that. And like, you know, have been through all those things in your past. And like, it, it's, it is important as a team to, to just be like, you know, it must be really hard for you to, to be here and supporting me. And you know, I mm. appreciate it. And, and that, you know, not bring any guilt into it, right? Not bring any, anything like that, anything but love and just saying like, it must be hard and I, you know, I'm, I'm sorry. It, it's mm-hmm. so hard on you. I love you. And I'm, I'm here for you too. Yeah. Yeah. It's important. And it's also important to understand that the other person might not be, <coughs> excuse me, in the best place to tell you or to share how they're feeling. You know, sometimes it takes a little time. Like for mm-hmm. me, it was, it was really hard for me to admit yeah. that I was going through a lot of pain because like my whole life, I just, I would, you know, I would feel pain or I would get bullied as a kid and I would just push all those emotions down and until they just like exploded inside of me. Mm-hmm. So like, I never, I never talked about how I felt with other mm-hmm. people. 
And it took me a long time and it was a hard thing for me to kind of, it was like another obstacle for me to overcome. Right. So like understanding that it might take some time or like some, like your partner might not be comfortable right off the bat sharing everything with you. Mm-hmm. Like it takes it like, again, like they might tell you like a little bit at a time and then you got to be really respect or uh, receptive to it right. and like really loving and accepting to it. And not like, Hey, you got to tell me everything, right. man. You got to tell right. me like, we're supposed to be on the same team. You're not telling me. Yeah. Come on. You got to tell me how you feel. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Now. Come on now. I saw a team. No, 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 love and acceptance and, you know, both sides, right? Yeah. For those of you who are the partner or a lot of times both people are struggling with PTSD, but for those of you who yeah. are the person, you know, with PTSD, it's important that, you know, it's not always all about us. You know, there's two people involved. It's a hundred percent, a hundred percent. Um, and that, that can be sometimes a tough pill to swallow to mm-hmm. say that, you know, like to, to, to be the partner and be like, you know, like how are you and check in with that other mm-hmm. person. And like you said, like wait kind of for them to, and just be receptive and just be kind and just be loving and just bring love into that situation. So that's yeah. absolutely awesome. Yeah. There's so many different things that we could go into. I know we could um, do this for hours. Well, we will do this for yeah, hours. We will. We will. But, um, you know, that does kind of lead into our last point, right? Which is to have the same vision for life. Yeah. So something that was really important for us through this journey was and through this journey together was laying out kind of a goal right we we kind of talked about growth all week and laying out a goal and a vision for our life and Mm -hmm. for our life together as a team um and so i think that's really important and it's vital it's it's i don't know if it's the most important thing but it's a it's it's vital to creating that team atmosphere Right. So okay. second to so you're going communication on the same page. or even, yeah, I mean, that is communicating. Right. Right. And just like laying out, you know, where, where do you want to be in a year? Where do you want to be in five years? Where do you want to be in 10 years? What do you want your life to look at? Mm-hmm. Right. Like make sure you have, or you create the same kind of vision for life. Yeah. And y- this is something we talked about really early uh, for our relationship, I think. Maybe almost too early, but you know, <laughs> just like you know, something we would talk about is like you know where we want kind of our careers to go, you know what we want our family to look like down the road, mm-hmm. right? So like something that's really important to me it, is having kids, right? That's really important to me, and that's important enough to me early on to um, you know pick the right partner to make sure that they also have that vision, right? Like I want right. like five kids, right? Yeah. <laughs> and so that's something we talked about. We I don't even think we've been together like a year. We've been together a couple of months. Yeah. And we well, j- kind of half jokingly, half heartedly brought it up. Um, Cause it's important. Cause it's important. Cause you want to be on the same page. Cause I want to make sure if I'm going to continue this relationship with you, that you're not someone who's like, Oh, I hate kids and I'm never having kids. Cause like, mm, uh, you're out. Right? All, right, bye. <laughs> All right. Right. So, um, we had that conversation early on. Right. And that is something that's important to him too. So it's like, Oh, okay, great. But we might not agree on the number quite yet, but, um, you know, I think that's important to lay out that vision, right? This is kind of what I want my career to look like. This is where I want to go. This is what, what I want, like my finances to look like. This is what excites me. This is mm. what I want my family to look like. This is what I want my retirement to look like, you know, like, yeah, I, yeah. I, you know, marriage is important to me or marriage is not important to me Yeah. or, you know, living close to my immediate family is important to just everything. Right. And it's yeah. fun. It yeah. is so fun to create your vision it and is. like, it like is. where you want to go and where you want to go together. Like, yeah. you know, you know, we always talk about like, I don't know why we talk about this. Do I have wrinkles? He always says no. like, I'm picturing you as an old lady, just like in a <laughs> rocking chair, like sitting next to me. I do that. Um, and that is really fun, right? Yeah. So like, that's something we picture, we vision, like we have this vision of like being two like really, really old people, like sitting in a double wide rocking chair, right? <laughs> Having our kids and grandkids and maybe some great grandkids run it around and you know, not being able to hear each other. So we're yelling, even though we're right next to yeah. each other, but <laughs> it's out of love. It's not real yelling. Right. So we've, we've created that vision huh? and that, what, what, honey, <laughs> what are you saying? Um, so I, you know, that's, it's really important and it's really fun to create that vision together. Right. So we talk about goals for our PTSD. We talk about goals for our, our personal lives, you know, think about team goals, think yeah. about the future together. And maybe, you know, if, if you feel like, your futures maybe don't align. Maybe you know, that's not the right person, right? Which is probably a whole separate conversation. But, you know, like make that vision together. Yeah, the vision is important on a lot of different levels. And like Keeling said, it helps you keep together and on the same page. And this is just like one avenue of your goals, right? This is just like your mm-hmm. relationship, right? Like you're still gonna have your personal, your like all your other goals in your life. And like your partner's gonna have all their goals. It's not like you're gonna become like the same person 
doing the same thing. Um, but having, having that vision is so important. It keeps you excited, keeps you motivated, keeps you looking for the good things in life, mm-hmm. right? The things that you're going to be working towards. And it was so, so important. And like, we constantly reinforced our vision for the future too. And like, when you're on the same page, it's like a team, a team has the same goal in mind. They, they right. have the same end goal in mind. So you can both work towards even us. It was like, here's another like vision that we had mm-hmm. um, and that we still have. Cause we still like get into some arguments once in a while. Mm-hmm. Um, but we want to get to a point where we argue 0% of the time. 0%. And people tell that's tell us that it's impossible. Mm-hmm. And we're not saying like not have disagreements, but like, that's a goal that we have, you know, it's just like, right. we don't want to have any arguments, like no, like right. negative, like, f- like real negative emotions in our conversations. Like we just want to be able to resolve it. Whatever disagreements we communicate. have, communicate, right. Because it's totally common. okay to disagree. Yeah. Right? But then yeah. once you start to bring those negative emotions in, even if we can quell them, and we can quell them really, really quickly now, but, like, I don't want to feel negative. I just want to be like, oh, I disagree, and, like, here are the reasons why. And he can be like, okay, I disagree with you, and, like, here are the reasons why. And, like, how can we compromise, or, like, how can I prove that I'm right? <laughs> right? How can I sell you on this? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um. So I think that's really important, right? To to say, you know, yeah. We plan on disagreeing for the rest of our lives. <laughs> yeah. Um, but we 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 don't plan on arguing. Right. Right. Um. Or, or having those negative emotions or, um, feeling yeah. that. Yeah. Flushed or heated. <laughs> yeah. So like you bring it down to like your daily life too. Like, that's an example where it's like, we have the goal of ne- never arguing. Mm-hmm. And then we also, we, we've also defined what arguing is. Yeah. Right. Yeah. We've o- even gone to that level. It's like, okay, once you feel the emotion come into like wh- when you're talking and you start to get like a, either like a raised voice or like you're talking faster or something like that's, that then becomes an argument. And then we're like, okay, we need to calm down and like to like, take a little break mm-hmm. and whatever that's getting off to weeds a little bit, yeah, but that's like the standards probably, but standards. Yeah. Standards versus goals. But, um, th- think about it. What do you want your relationship to look like? Right? How do you want to interact with your your loved ones or your kids or anything? Yeah, like or your friends, your whatever. Friends, you any relationship with your friends that you more. Have. You want to always be the person that answers the the text messages. <laughs> <laughs> so old when I say it. the text messages. What do you want them to look like realistically? Like you know, you know what? Like how do you want to feel when you're interacting with this person? Yeah. And then you have to communicate that and combine that goal together. So you're working towards that same goal. So you're mm-hmm. both on the same page. Because if you're like, you know, like I like. I just want to feel loved and like, I want to cuddle with you and like, like, like an hour a day at the end of the day. And like, but your partner is like, no, I don't like, I don't want that, but you don't communicate that. You're going to be at, you're going to be like butting Mm -hmm. heads your entire life. Yeah. If you can't communicate like and get on the same goal and vision, you know, and feel heard. So, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Super important to get that vision, to get those goals, to set those goals and actually write them down. So the action today is to, you know, with your partner or, even with your friends or by yourself, if you're by yourself right now, it's, right yeah, now. It's, it's good to define it, like kind of what, figure out what you want in your head and then kind of bring it together. Yeah. Um, and sit down with your partner or your friends or again, in your head and right now, right, write your vision, right? Create your team vision. What do you want all of that to look like? So we mm-hmm. just described some examples. So create your vision. And if it's with, you know, friends and that's not a vision you want to create together, create it by yourself. You know, I, w- I want to be the person that, you know, I, I always show up to, you know, birthday parties. I always remember birthdays mm-hmm. and then, you know, write down everyone's birthdays. So you don't forget, right? Put them in your calendar, whatever. Um, I want to be the friend that, you know, you know, once a year I have a barbecue with all my friends. Great. Do it. Make a plan, right? Do it. I want to be the friend who's always smiling and making other people laugh. I want to be the person who is always saying hi to people. Mm-hmm. I want to be in the kind of relationship where we never fight. I want to be in the kind of relationship where we can communicate and we can disagree and, you know, we can, we can just be honest with each other and share our feelings and not feel like we're going to be judged or, um, hurt. Yeah. I want to laugh every single day. Yeah. I want to, I want to, one of my, my goals is to make this guy over here laugh every single day, like real laugh. Sometimes I'll do like a, <laughs> but yeah. like I want to like a She's not laugh. that funny. So she has I'm to work really very hard funny, on it. very funny, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> that was you me. I made myself laugh. laugh. <laughs> That's so annoying. <laughs> um, but anyway, so take action on that. So how to create a team atmosphere. So now we know why it's important. Try to consistently reinforce that you are a team, right? Constantly, constantly reinforce that you're a team. Yeah. And have the same vision. Literally and go say and it. create that vision. Say, we are a team. We are on the same team. We I want got the best this. for you. I'm on your side, man. Remember our vision. Brother, sister. We're going to have all those kids and those grandkids running around while... 
you know, our hearing aids are acting up and we're, we're yelling at each other. And even we're going to call right you granny and me pappy. And granny. I'm not going to be granny. I'm going to be She's gonna be granny. No, no we're gonna, I'm going to sell her on granny. So some final words. Just you wait. Um, <laughs> just, just you wait. <laughs> 60 year. <laughs> uh, some final words here today. You know, if you like the podcast, subscribe. Um, or if you're on YouTube, hit the notification bell. We do them every weekday. So Monday's motivation. Tuesday's our PTSD book club. Uh, Wednesday is PTSD recovery workshop. Thursday, like today, is PTSD relationships. And Friday is a Q&A. So subscribe. We put out a lot of content because we love you guys. We believe in you guys. Again, some of it is a kick in the butt. Some of it's a little bit tough to swallow at times, but we love you. We're going to give you what you, you. need. We honestly. believe in you. And, and we're, you know, we don't want to sugarcoat everything. Mm-hmm. Um, so we want to be here for you, but we want to, you know, spread the belief that it, it absolutely is possible to recover mm-hmm. and make a full recovery from PTSD and or CPTSD. Yeah. Um, you can survive this in your relationships in your personal life in every single area. So subscribe for more awesome stuff for more. Everything we do is action based, right? We want you know, to take action. Yep. And if you take action, you're going to be amazed amazed at how your life changes yeah. even with these little actions yeah um so if you want to learn about the broken to unbreakable program we showed you the books at the beginning and i talked a little bit about it right now i'm running a free training um you know how to heal ptsd even if you feel completely hopeless even if you've suffered for decades so it's an awesome training um i talk a little bit about our relationship in there mm-hmm. and you can kind of see my story nothing detailed but kind of my journey um and so that's a great training and you can, and then at the end, I talk about the Broken to Unbreakable program, and you can register for that training. We'll put a link below, but it's mm-hmm. overcomingptsd.info slash go. Mm-hmm. So that's overcomingptsd.info slash go. So that's a great training. Yeah, and if, if you're feeling like right now, like you're just like lost or stuck, or um, even in your relationship, like you're fighting all the time, like go check out that webinar and like learn about Broken to Unbreakable. Mm-hmm. Honestly, like if you don't know the steps that you need to be taking, like check that out. You get, you'll, you'll get support from, from Kayleen, um, one-on-one and like get to learn exactly. And like, if you, if you want to, if you want to talk to her, yeah. like, and like actually get her advice on your specific situation and how you can make that full transformation, um, check that out. Yeah. And then you'll be put up on the map. You'll be put on the map. <laughs> um, and so, so, so reach out, you know, if you have any questions, my email is Kayleen at overcoming PTSD. Um, dot info. Mm-hmm. So that's K A Y L E E N at overcoming PTSD dot info. And the other thing I just want to mention, because this is the last weekend, we're going to be doing it for a while is this week on, I'm going to be doing, um, PTSD recovery consultations. So I'm going to be doing one-on-one consultations. So that's a phone call with me and we're going to be doing it this weekend, but then probably not again for a while. They've gone so well, honestly, uh, we, we did them, did we do them last two weekends? We did, we did them last weekend yeah, and then yeah. I think the weekend before and it's been, just been awesome to talk to you all. Um, and so, you know, we'll identify kind of the areas that you're struggling and, you know, your goals and kind of map out a path to kind of get there mm-hmm. um, and, you know, see if we can work together, if I can, you know, help you. And it's that's a great consultation. So email me if you want one. You can't schedule one yet, um, but you should, you're going to be able to schedule one yeah. tomorrow. Email, so email, email Kayleen me. and she'll send you a, uh, a schedule page yeah. when it's out. Yeah. When it's ready. Even if you're you're listening or watching to this like a month from now or a year from now, email her uh, yeah, and, yeah, and she'll email, set something right. up. You know, whether it's <laughs> whatever, she'll set something I'll up. I'll make and it set, work. W- yeah, she'll make it work. So that's all that I have. I think that's that, all that I that's have. That's all you have. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we love I had a great you. time. We believe in you. This, this is, is a great, great episode. episode. Um, jinx. Um, and we will see you all tomorrow for our Q and A. Happy Thursday. Happy Thursday, everybody. It's almost Friday. Hang in there. (laughs) Hang in there. Hang tight. We love you. We'll see you tomorrow. See ya. Bye-bye. Adios.